For more than 200 years, slavery was legal within the present boundaries of the United States, a country founded on the belief that all men are created equal, with the God-given right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. With one-third of its population living in slavery, the United States would partake in one of history's great ironies. Its incarcerated inhabitants, a nation enslaved, would write the country's first folk music and sing the nation's first songs of freedom. Millions of voices and centuries of toil would rise up and become one voice, and that voice would create a musical genre to which all American songs can trace their lineage and their roots. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Harry T. Burley was born on 3rd Street in Erie's Lower East Side. Music was everywhere in the Burley home. His father, who died when Harry was a child, would lead the family in singing while they worked. His grandfather, formerly enslaved, was the town crier and lamplighter and would take Harry and his older brother Reginald with him on his nightly rounds. Grandfather and grandsons would sing the songs of the African slave, the songs that the grandfather's father and his grandfather sang, songs of life and freedom. Burley's mother, Elizabeth, and her sister, Louisa, taught him the songs of the European classical tradition. Elizabeth was a college-educated woman, fluent in both French and Greek, but in the early days of emancipation, she was only able to get a job as a janitress and housemaid. She and her son worked in the home of Elizabeth Russell, a local arts patron who hosted performances of art songs. Young Harry would listen from a distance and the songs and singers that he heard in Russell's home helped release his inner voice, a deep and rich baritone, a voice that was soon in demand at churches, synagogues, and homes in and around Erie. In 1892, Burley left Erie to pursue a musical career. With only a few belongings and a head full of music, he left for New York City to audition for the National Conservatory of Music. The years Burley spent at the conservatory greatly influenced his career, mostly due to his friendship with Antonin Dvorak, the conservatory's director. After spending countless hours recalling and performing the African-American spirituals that he had learned from his grandfather, Burley was encouraged to preserve these songs in his own arrangements, and their themes can be heard in Dvorak's New World Symphony. Before the turn of the century, he established himself as a composer of popular art songs, for decades, Burley traveled the world, performing the songs of his grandfather, all the while giving his country its first song, which became jazz, swing, blues, and eventually rock. Burley came home to Erie nearly 100 years after he left, to that gospel feast, that promised land where all is peace. Come home.